Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Hope on Wheels. My name is Travis. In this edition of Hope on Wheels, I want to share something with you that I think anybody that is their own guardian that experiences a challenge or is a guardian of someone who does should know about. And that is how to check on benefits online and also how to report wages of someone working uh, who has a challenge or someone who is a guardian of someone who works and has a challenge that needs to report their wages. But again, the key phrase here is doing all of this online. I say that with emphasis because anybody that has been on Social Security for a uh, decent amount of time, and even those that haven't, learn very quickly that when you have benefits, you really have to keep track of everything yourself. If you don't, you kind of end up in trouble because Social Security claims that they will let you know if things change and that if you report something, uh, they will keep track of what you report in your changes so that and let you know that something has changed. And they mean that. I'm not saying that they don't, but they don't report to you very, very quickly. So you end up running into a lot of problems. I should know. I have <laughs> because I'm on Social Security disability income not Social Security income. I didn't even know I was not on Social Security income, which is different from a Social Security disability income. When you're on Social Security disability income, um, what that means is um, you get some extra benefits that you don't get if you're on Social Security basic income. I won't go into what those details are because it's not really relevant to this video. But things like that, I would have known had I known about this stuff online. I didn't know until I had a benefits analysis person check into my benefits for me. Which I recommend, by the way, if you haven't done that, there's a program called Take It Home Today that anybody can ask about and get an appointment set up for. And I can show you online how to talk to someone online to get that done and we will go through that. But before I get into all of that, I'm gonna put a little disclaimer in this video, and that disclaimer is this. I am gonna to have to use my personal account to show you how to do some of this. What that means, though, is I will show you what a lot of the pages look like, and I will talk you through you know, where you can go to get some of the information on your own pages but I'm not actually going to click on those pages because it will show very personal information and <clears throat> that's not something I'm going to share on this YouTube video because I don't want my personal information getting out there I just wanted to put that little disclaimer in this video now before we got too far into this so uh, one thing I will tell you though is, and I'm going to say this um, now so you can see, uh, see it, um, there's going to be a section saying create an account. When you do that, and I'll repeat this again in the video, when you do that, you're going to need a code via um, Social Security, and they'll give it to you for free. You don't have to you know, beg or plead, you just tell them you want to be able to report your wages and check your benefits online. And they actually encourage me when I finally ran, ran into a problem with them to do this online. And what led to that problem is um, rather interesting. But again, the code they'll give you for free, you need the code in order to create a, an account because when you click create an account, you have to go through all this extra information steps uh, where you just fill out basic information. Well, within the create an account section, 
if you don't already have an account created, they are going to ask you for the social security code that you were given. If you haven't asked them for the social security code first, you're going to get stuck and you won't be able to create your account. Getting the information is easy to do as far as the code is concerned. You can either go down to Social Security and get them to give you the paperwork in hand, which I recommend doing because then you guarantee that you're going to get it. Yes, that means sitting there for probably a couple of hours, but it's still worth doing and getting the information. What you're going to want to ask about is what's called My Social Security. And again, I'll point that out when I show you on my screen uh, what I'm talking about. Once you ask them for that and they give you the code, you're going to go through, create an account, fill out the information, enter the code, and then change your password. Once that's done, you'll be able to get in and do this online. And again, it won't matter whether you do it on a tablet, phone, or computer. You'll be able to do it all online, and you won't have to go in to check on these things or get information. Even if you need a, a new um, Social Security card, you'll be able to apply for that online without having to <laughs> go in and fill out the paperwork. It's really easy. But I, I'm going to show you how to do at least the basics of this. So here we go. First, I'm going to change my screen over. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Google account right down here. And what I did, and you can use any web browser, by the way. I should have mentioned that to do this, you don't have to do Google. I just use Google because I think the uh, Google web browser is easier to use. I like it. It's smoother. What you're going to do is in the browser, you're going to type in Social Security Administration. You're going to click that, uh, click search after that. This is the link right here, the one that says United States Social Security Administration. You click on that it's going to bring up this page. Always, every time you click on this, it's going to bring up this page. What you're going to do after that is, if you look right here, it says sign in, sign up. You're going to click here. It's going to bring up this page. These two things are important. Only if you have a business or you need to work with the government offices. But for our purposes, it doesn't really matter about these two. What you're going to want to click on for reporting your benefits and things like that is the one that's called My Social Security. Okay, You click on that one. Then it's going to bring up this page. Now down here, right here, is the part where it says create an account. This is the part that, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you're going to want to click on if you don't have a new account and enter the code they give to you in the mail, all this stuff. But anyway, we're going to go up here. I'm going to enter in my information. Now, some of you might be saying to yourselves as you're watching this video, oh no, why is he showing us this part? Because if we know his social security number and or know his passwords, we could get into the system. Not with social security, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. There's an extra security feature 
that I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Okay, this is the part I was talking about. When you set up an account, it's going to ask you, give us a way to give you a code each time that you want to log into the system. Myself, you can do it via email uh, or you can do it via texting. Uh, myself, I chose texting just because for me that's easier. So every time you click yes right here, you click next after that. Now, what's going to happen is what just you just heard me receive a text. Okay, you're going to open up the the uh, text message. It's going to give you a code that you have to enter right here to. Uh, get into the system. And be sure that this part right here that says the uh, this code will expire in 10 minutes, be sure that you enter the code within 10 minutes or you're going to have to do that step all over again. Now, I should mention, for those of you who are physically challenged like I am, and you use voice dictation software uh, to type like I do, um, I've been using this website for several months now, and <laughs> the one thing I learned, um, these codes work every time that they send you, but they won't work if you try to verbally put in the code. Um, their system won't accept you verbally saying it. The numbers will appear in the box as long as you say it right, but the system will say doesn't recognize. You have to type it in one digit at a time. Now if you can't do that yourself, you're going to need somebody to help you that you trust to enter that code. Now, don't panic because again, every time you do this, it will give you a different code. It's not going to be the same code each time. So even if you have to get someone to help you, you don't have to worry about them being able to break into your system if they see this code. That's why I'm not afraid to show you what code on the screen here because even though I'm showing you this code, the code will be different the next time I go to log in. Okay, now down here, I'm not going to go through all of this because it's just standard terms of service, which is just an agreement condition thing. Down here, it's always going to say you need to agree to these terms. It won't let you go forward unless you do that. So you click this, you click next. After clicking that, this is what pops up. Now, on to some really cool and fun stuff here, folks. I love this for myself, okay? I really do. Because this page right here is a basic overview of your entire benefits life, okay? And what I mean by that is this. You start out up here, just all basic stuff. This will tell you at this point where your benefits were at as of 2017, for example. Not a huge big deal, but you can still click here and I'll show you an overview of all of that, okay? Um, this is really cool, okay? This right here, um, you can click on this part and see your uh, Medicare benefits. It'll break down for you what your Medicare benefits are. This part's even cooler. I cannot tell, tell you how many times, this part right here is really cool. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to call Social Security because I don't see my benefits being posted 
as yes, I'm going to get my benefits, or um, you know, I I get notified by my bank that my benefits are going in, but all of a sudden, my I notice that my benefit numbers are wrong. And when I say by benefit numbers being wrong, what I mean is I'm not getting the full amount um, for my benefits. This right here eliminates my worry about that. I can log in and every payment that I receive via Social Security, it'll give me the date it's supposed to be in my account and how much I'm supposed to be getting. And that right there, the 946 per month is what I'm supposed to be getting. But if you log in and you see the you you know the amount that you're supposed to be getting and you don't see an accurate number for you or something seems off, you can click right here and do an overview of your payment history and break it down for yourself and just keep an eye on are you getting the benefits you're supposed to be getting on time that kind of thing which is extremely helpful folks I mean I, I can't tell you how helpful that is because you know I, I just received my February benefits payment um, on the first okay but already it shows the March 1st benefits payment meaning that in March 1st that's when my next Social Security check is going in but I already know now that I am getting the benefits I don't have to wait to look in my bank account and panic if I don't see it because the date sometimes will fluctuate but this guarantees that I know I'm getting it very helpful now something else that's really cool this this right here get a benefits verification letter let's say you're applying for something for uh, benefits state benefits or they need or anything that's benefits related doesn't matter what it is and on the application it states that you need to have a social security proof of benefits letter click this right here and all your mailing information and stuff like that will be entered when you created an account from before well uh, you click that and they'll mail you proof of benefits which then means you don't have to go down to the Social Security office and ask for one they'll just mail you one right away it's it's there folks I mean it's it's that simple versus having to spend four to five hours to do that now on to the part that everybody needs to know this part right here report wages I use this all the time folks you click this the, then this is gonna pop up every employer that you or the individual that you're a guardian for is gonna be listed on their screen as you can see I only had the one health community resources you click that you click whichever employer that you're reporting benefits for which in my case is just the one so I click that and they have it on file as long as you report it to them and you can report the change easily I mean you know like it said if you have to report uh, another employer that's not listed please contact us you can still do that right here and not have to go in to, to report that change where it says contact us you can still report the change right there uh, but then you click next now <clears throat> with most employers you get paid twice a week you have to immediately put in here either daily weekly every two weeks or twice a month every two weeks or twice a month works in my case because I get paid it bi-weekly okay I usually put in even if you get paid twice a month I would still put in every two weeks because usually when you get paid twice a month it is every two weeks and that's the one I always choose so 
Um, you click this, but after you click that, you have to click Add Pay Stub Information for this employer. Then it pops up. Okay? You put in your Pay Stub Start Date, which is just basic drop down menu stuff. And then your uh, pay stub end date, same as your pay stub start date. And that's good. You know, that's how simple that part is. Now, this part here, it says underneath, you know, what exactly this is, okay? Which is your gross pay before taxes is pulled out. What that means is, for those of you that don't understand that, it's the number. It's the money that you get paid that's at, at the main part of your, main body of your pay stub. Okay, not your what actually goes into your account, the ending number. It's the main number on your pay stub at the very top where it shows the number and then then the taxes. The the amount of numbers of tax uh, money that gets pulled out of your, out of your paycheck every month. That's the number that you want. Just look for the word gross pay if you are having even more trouble understanding what, I'm, what I mean. The gross pay number is the number that you want to put in here. Do not, and I cannot emphasize enough, do not put in the net pay number. If you do that too many times and SSI or SSDI, whichever one you're reporting for, notices that it's going to drastically affect your benefits okay I mean really affect the number and if they catch that you can get in trouble for uh, putting in the wrong number so just be very very careful about what number you put in here and then this part here most employers nowadays will direct deposit your uh, income into your account um, and what you want to put in here is the date that you got paid and there will be a, a right right up where it says start date and end date for pay period every pay stub is laid out differently but there will be a pay date that uh, is listed and that's what that's saying here is what day did this go into your account? Now, that's what you put in there. I can't hit update because there's nothing in there yet. But what you do after hitting update, it'll show the information, it'll show you the number of how much you got paid or the information that you put in for the pay stub. It'll show you that. And then uh, it'll tell you submit now keep in mind when you hit submit it goes directly to social security so you want to make sure that your numbers are right double triple check them before you send it off make sure that your pay date your pay your pay start date your pay end date and the date you got paid is correct and the number that you got paid gross wise is in there correctly now for the gross number, for those of you that we use voice te te technology, unlike when you enter the passcode, the gross number you can enter verbally if you have trouble typing. And it will um, let you do that. And you can use Dragon also to scroll down, tell it the menus, that kind of thing, to uh, enter all the dates if you can't use a keyboard to scroll. You, it'll let you use Dragon here and it'll work no problem. It's just that login page that it won't work. But once you hit submit, it's in the system. Now my personal advice to somebody is every time you get paid, the instant you get paid, that day or the next day, just submit your pay stub information. That way you don't have to do it at the end of the month and try to remember. 
you can do each pay stub as it goes and then they have a record of each one and they can't say that you haven't reported it but now that you've done that when you do that here's something you need to know I'm gonna hit leave page because it, it's a security thing that they require back again okay now this is a part here that I wanted to show all of you you're gonna go up to this message center and every time you submit a pay stub doesn't matter if you do it once or you do it twice a month like I do you're gonna get a wage report receipt okay I'm not gonna click on that because it'll show personal information that I don't want to divulge to people but I can click on this next part but when you get that wage report receipt my advice is don't delete any of those keep them because they are it's vital because if Social Security says to you that you didn't report something you have it electronically documented under your messages that that you did report your wages during that time frame okay and every time you report a wage whether you do it through your email or through texting like I do they will send you a message saying you have a new message waiting for you at your system or within your account that you need to check just to verify that that they know you have it now just because you're doing all this electronically and you have a backup I mean that's all well and good but that doesn't mean you need to you should rely on your computer system to keep everything for you bad 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 idea I can't stress that enough I recommend that you print off your um, either your pay stubs or your um, wage receipt report or both and personally I would do both uh, because that will guarantee that you have proof to Social Security that you did do something okay because Social Security is notorious for losing information a lot they will lose it all the time so I really recommend that you report or that you print off both if you can and just keep paper copies of your pay stubs and keep paper copies of your um, wage receipts if um, if necessary for you or if you really want to um, at least do your pay stubs that way you have paper copies of them if you go into Social Security and they say that they didn't get something you at least have paper copies that you can take with you that um, will uh, give you proof that you did get paid and stuff like that now this part here um, is a chat service I'm gonna click on this that little blue matter of fact let me back out of that let me go back just real quick this little blue part right here that says get help I'm not gonna click on that because um, it'll automatically link me into somebody to talk to with Social Security but you click on the mess I'm gonna click on my message center again I'm gonna click on this I chatted with somebody online by clicking get help and this kind of gives you an example of what you asked and stuff like that and what they said and it keeps a record of it and that is the coolest thing ever because you can print that off and if you have to go down to Social Security you have a paper version of what you asked and what they said because then it doesn't become he said she said ever you have documented proof of what was said and to who 
and they can't say that, that they meant this or they meant that. Now, this is something I want to show you right here, this part. I asked specifically in um, December, I asked them, um, you know, um, I noticed that my Social Security disability benefits are going up next year. Does that mean that the gross income allotment is going up? And what I mean by that is the amount of money per month that we're allowed to make before we would loot, run the risk of losing benefits. Okay? And the lady responded, yes, they're going up from the 921 to 946, which is a $25 increase. Here's where they made a mistake. The, she told me the 17 64 for a year. That didn't seem right to me. I mean, even I, I mean, a $600, $600 jump isn't normal for SSDI to be increased that far. I was kind of shocked when I heard that number. Okay. Uh, so I did a little bit further research by asking around to some benefit analysis people that I know personally, um, and I just researched it myself. It turns out the lady gave me the right number, but she gave me the right number for the wrong category. This number happens to be for, this number right here happens to be for seniors, not people on Social Security Disability Income. Social Security Disability Income is different. I point this out because I'm telling you that don't always believe what Social Security tells you because sometimes they mean well and they give you the right information, but they give you the right information for the wrong category. So just be cautious of things like that. They're not always wrong, but just be wary. If something sounds like it's a big number to you, like what, like that right there, like this, uh, just check it. Do a little research. You can type in stuff and find it. But I'm pointing this out to you because these people responded and we chatted for maybe 15 minutes online versus going on the phone and calling the federal number or going down there and taking half an hour to do so. Okay? So... I just, it's very, very cool and it's very, very easy. So just uh, consider using the Get Help icon, clicking on that, and asking for assistance with whatever question you might need. And I should mention again for those of you that use voice dictation software, um, you'll have to hit the enter key, but you can voice dictate your responses into the help or into the chat and then hit enter and then it'll send it to the person versus you having to hand type everything um, and again if you can't do that you're going to need somebody that you can trust to help you with the typing um, and again for those of you who are guardians of individuals with special needs who have trouble leaving um, the house or don't have the time to leave the house to chat with somebody or don't want to sit on the phone forever to try to chat with somebody, do this. Like I said, it took five minutes to do. And I, I got answers. Yeah, some of the answers were correct, some of the answers were wrong, but it's still faster than having to sit online or having to sit on the phone or go down there. You, you're going to get like I said, it took five, ten minutes to have this discussion, pretty much, and I was done. Um, it just took me a, lot, a little bit longer because my reading ability, I can read just fine, but I'm slower at it than most. But anyway, um, that is a basic overview 
of how this works. Let me close this out. I hope this video helped you with the basics of what um, Social Security is all about and how to navigate it. If you have any questions regarding to, uh, this topic, you can reach me either in the comments down below this video or you can contact me at T. Noah, T is in Travis, Noah, N O A H, all lowercase, not um, any uppers, at hopealaska.org. And I will gladly answer any questions you might have uh, regarding how to re handle uh, contacting them so that you can use an online service to report your wages and keep an eye on your benefits. Now, I, I'm not going to sit here and say this is the way to do it for everybody. Believe me, some people are don't want to do it com through the computer. It's not a method they want to use. But I find it the most effective method that, that there is. And you don't have to send your pay stubs in with a mailer, you know, uh, once a month and I say once a month with the mailers because they only give you 12 envelopes one envelope for every month and a year so you have to wait till the end of the end of each month to report your uh, wages that's a problem for me I don't I don't like that sorry sorry about the weird look on the screen there for a second earlier but anyway I don't like um, that for uh, reporting wages because you have to wait every month and again it's happened to me when I submit the pay stubs through the mailers every time before I started doing it electronically they would get back to me and say you did not include uh, information needed when that's not true, I always would, but they would have trouble filing it, so they would send me the pay stubs back with another mailer every month with a piece of paperwork saying, you need to fill this information out, send it back, and then we will file the pay stubs. It's ridiculous. It takes too long. So I use the method that I showed you to report my wages, and since I've used this method, I haven't had any problems, none. And it's very simple, very easy. And like I said, I don't wait to the end of the month to report my wages anymore. Every time I get paid, like the next day, I go on the computer, go into the website, and I just fill out the report wages part. And uh, it then I submit my wage. And then they know it's already in the system, the first pay stub, second, then the second one, as they come in instead of waiting until the end of the month. The other benefit to that is you don't have to waste quite as much paper because those of us that are on Social Security um, income or Social Security disability income also have to report our wages to the state, too, to get our... Uh, Medicaid benefits. Well, you, you know, when you have to report your Medicaid benefits, not only do you have to print off a pay stub for yourself, but you have to print off a pay stub for the state and for Social Security. Now, which is three pieces of paper each time a pay stub comes in, so you're printing off, you know, uh, six, you're wasting six pieces of paper. Now you've reduced that by a number of two so you only got to do four because you only need a copy for yourself to keep for your file, which I can't strongly uh, 
recommend enough that you guys keep a copy for yourself. And then you just have to print off a copy for the state. Um, which again, saves paper. <laughs> but, uh, you know, please, please, especially with this, if you have any questions or concerns, the faster way to get a response would probably be to contact me, and I'm not just saying that, but I deal with this every month uh, throughout my life since I was, I've dealt with this for every month throughout my life since I was 18, and I've become very proficient at doing this. So please, if you have any questions or concerns or you're not sure how to navigate something, contact me. I'm more than willing to help. Again, you can reach me at the comments down below with any questions, and I will do my best to read through them quickly and answer them. Beyond that, uh, you can email me again, as I said, at T as in Travis, Noah, all lowercase, N O A H, at hopealaska.org, and I will answer any questions anyone has. Other than that, I hope you found this video informative and helpful. And I hope you guys have a great day. And God bless. See you next time.